Okay, welcome back. So now we have our second movie, which goes into a little bit more detail about how we picked out those four parts of the calculation question to put together our answer. Now, our first step, I'll just show you the um, box that I'm looking at, has 10 gram going into 100 ml of saline. In other words, we've got a meat solution. Now, 10 gram into 100 ml is equivalent to 1 gram in 10 ml. I'll just write that down, 1 gram in 10 ml. Okay, now we like to work out um, organisms per gram, so that looks good for the one gram. But normally we would be um, culturing one mil, but instead we've got 10 mil. So this is our first dilution, 10 times. So we've got 10 mil rather than one mil. In other words, uh, there's a dilution of 10 times. Our second step, let's move down. Instead of taking one mil and looking for the organisms in one mil, which would flood the agar plate, we're only taking 100 microliters. So our 100 microliters, how many 100 microliters fit into one mil? Hopefully you will realize that there are 1,000 microliters in a mil. So 1,000 microliters equals 1 mil. Since we only have 100 microliters, that is also a 10 times dilution. Let's move down to the next step. This is the bit, the bit that's a bit more complicated. So our 10 to the minus um, 0, let's have a look. This is a test tube here. And this test tube has in it 10 gram of meat made up to 100 ml of saline. Okay, so that's there's no dilution here. That's our original um, suspension of meat in saline. But um, there's likely to be far too many organisms in that, so let's do 10-fold dilutions. How do you prepare 10-fold dilutions? You basically have a series of test tubes and you label them. So the first test tube, which has no dilution, our original solution of meat and saline, we call that 10 to the 0, no dilution. Our next tube, we have 900 microliters of saline, so 900 microliters of saline, and we take... 100 from our first tube and put it into our second tube. So you can see here that our second tube has 100 microliters and 900 microliters of saline. So that is a 10 to the minus 1 dilution. If we keep with this dilution series, if we go to the third tube, it already has 900 microliters of saline in it. We add 100 microliters from this tube into that tube and that becomes our 10 to the minus 2 dilution. So what do we do with these test tubes now? Each of these test tubes, um, and I'll just get rid of that little mark that I made there, we'll go back here. So what I'm trying to do is just move down to some agar plates. If we take 100 microliters and pop it onto this agar plate here, we'll have far too many colonies to count. If we take 100 microliters from our second test tube and put it onto an agar plate, you can see the result in our book was 300 colonies. That's likely to be inaccurate because there's far too many counts. If we look at our next agar plate, it was 100 microliters from the 10 to the minus 2 dilution and we had 42 colonies. So this is the best agar plate to choose to form our basis for calculation. So here we have 42 by 10 to the 2 because of our 10 to the minus 2 dilution here. Our final fourth step, let's just move down, is that it asks you to provide a count per kilogram. So far we've got a count per gram. So to convert to kilogram, count per, per kilogram, there is one gram okay but we want to go up to a thousand grams okay and to do that we multiply by a thousand so that dilution factor is 10 to the 3. So they're the four parts of the calculation question hopefully that will help you um, um, achieve your final result. I'll make one more movie that is the second